Next question. Why is Russia, China, Pakistan, Iran, and other like-minded country, like countries, why don't they come together to bring gold and silver as legal tender? Answer. The Articles of Agreement of the International Monetary Fund prohibit the use of gold as money. So any country which wants to bring gold and silver as legal tender would have to leave the IMF. But Venezuela under Hugo Chavez decided we wanted to leave the IMF, but they could not leave it because the laws that had been put into place for leaving the IMF were too expensive for Venezuela. They, they couldn't afford it. So they are tied down to the IMF. You can't get out. Um, if a country can leave the IMF, yes, well, then you can bring gold and silver as legal tender. But they have all been imprisoned and now they're enslaved by the IMF. Next question. Do you agree that in a free market, the market sets the wages of workers and not the state? Of course. Of course. A man came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, prices are too high. Impose price control. The Prophet said, no. The man came back a second time and a third time. The Prophet said, no. Islam does not accept that the state can impose price control, either for goods or for services, for wages, whatever it is. So we don't have something called minimum wage <laughs> legislation, not in Islam, no. And uh, when the state intervenes in the market to try to impose price control, and when the state intervenes in the market to try to redistribute wealth, well, this is the mistake that Hugo Chavez made in Venezuela. This is the mistake that Maduro is still making in Venezuela. That's why, because of these mistakes on their part, they have been so weak in their response to the attacks launched upon Venezuela and on Zimbabwe and so on. Any country that steps out of line, they attack your money. Iran, the Iranian real is worthless. Yeah, so that's why they now have the Toban instead of the real. So then, do you agree that in a free market, the market sets the wages of the workers and not the state to state-imposed minimum wage legislation despite some benefits to it? So I've answered that question, no. In Islam, we insist that the market must be a free market and it must be a fair market. That's why when you steal, not a mango, you steal a dinar, we cut off your hand. This is called deterrent punishment, so that nobody would steal, so it will be a fair market. But you cannot have a fair market when you prevent money, you prevent gold as money. That's right. If Allah has made the dinar halal and you make it haram, that's shirk. Shall I repeat that? Particularly for my critics. If Allah has made the dinar and dirham halal, which he has done, it's in the Quran, and you make it haram, which is what the IMF has done, then that is shirk. This is in Surah to Tawbah. Yes. And if we then join into that monetary system from the IMF, then we participate in the shirk. There's universal shirk in the world today. Universal shirk. Because of this uh, corruption of the free and the fair market, where, where you no longer can have money, which is good money, uh, money with integrity, and that is gold and silver coins. This is a big subject uh, and more time to be devoted to it. Can an interest-bearing, unsecured loan, that is without a mortgage, be considered as business? No, 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 no. <laughs> Once it is, once it is an interest-bearing loan, it is riba. Is it bad if a government redistributes some wealth from riches to poor via the public sector? Of course it is bad. 
the government, the state must not intervene in the economy to redistribute wealth. That's what they did in Malaysia with the Bumiputra policy. But how can we teach them when they don't want to learn from us the Quran? The state must not intervene in the economy to redistribute wealth. Allah's laws, Allah has laws of inheritance, for example, which redistributes wealth, breaks up wealth. And then when you do business, Allah can take from some and give to others because business always involves risks. But when the bank lends money on interest, the bank wants to eliminate risk. That's why when an economy is based on riba, wealth will no longer circulate through the economy. And when wealth no longer circulates through the economy, the rich will remain forever rich. And this is what Allah has prohibited in the Quran. They won't tell you this on the mimbar for Yawmul Juma. They have other things to talk about more important than this. <laughs> you won't hear them ever talking about this. And that's why you, you hardly ever find me conducting the Juma anymore. This is what Allah has said in the Quran. Allah does not want that wealth should circulate only amongst the wealthy. No. Allah wants that wealth should circulate through the economy. So those who are rich today can be poor tomorrow. Allah can cause it. And those who are poor today can be rich tomorrow. Allah can cause it. Nowhere in the world today do you have an economy like that. Nowhere. And guess what the world of Islamic scholarship are doing? They're sleeping. 